Hey there folks, so today I'm going to start modeling this thing, this AK, and I'm just looking at my refs here. Now I've got something already modeled here, it's already started, and it's not going too bad. I've got the basic shape down, I've got a little bit of the details in, and I've, as you can see I've got some of the floating details on the other side. And I've got a couple of those uh, with a symmetry modifier, so they're about equal on uh, on this side. So now I'm just adding in some edge loops because I'm going to cut in the hole for the bolt where the uh, eject ejector port or whatever you call it is. And uh, that's probably uh, that's something I can do just by moving around edge loops. I'm also uh, fixing some of the mesh flow in the back there because that's got to be a pretty smooth area. And that's pretty important. I'm just doing the same here. So now I'm using just a grow selection to quickly get down the selection. And so now I'm just going to delete this and fix up whatever I need to. Some of the floating detail that I did earlier needed to be changed, like this part. Uh, okay, so now I'm just adding in the edge loops that I need to uh, to do to make it keep its structure. Now I'm I'm, I'm duplicating a couple of, uh, a, a couple of faces here, just to start off on the the bolt at the actual bolt itself, just to keep its shape, so we don't have to like redo the shape. This is faster just to duplicate some faces. So now I'm adding in the edge loops that I need to add in order to keep my sh to start making the shape itself. So I'm just adjusting it according to my reference picture, and adding in loops to make it you know, how the shape actually is. And I'm adding I'm using uh, chamfer to keep keep the shape. All right, so that's like the basic shape right there. And now I'm just fixing it up so it keeps the smoothness. So now I'm going into edge and border mode and I'm going to try to make this uh, inside portion here. Now because this is on the other side of the gun and this is the, a, a first person weapon we don't particularly need to put a lot of detail in there. So I'm just basically making it flat. If you really want to impress uh, people, you could probably model in like all the internals and stuff and then bake those down to just like a flat plane. And that would probably uh, turn some heads. So I'm just fixing up the shape and adding in all the geometry that I need to keep it again. And I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Oh, I'm adding in more faces here. To try and keep the shape a little bit better. And fixing up some uh, polys that I that don't make any sense. A lot of stuff that's just there for no reason. And that can get deleted. Uh, target welding various things, duplicating over, uh, getting rid of like overlapping faces and stuff. For whatever reason, like when you use the extrude tool, it starts to screw stuff up after a while. I honestly have no idea why that is, but sometimes you get a lot of errors, and I don't like that. So I'm just trying to get the shape right and uh, adding in some loops to start on the the bolt handle, the charging handle or whatever you, you call it these days, you dang kids. 
uh, with the, with this bolt, the the handle is actually like it's it's welded on or somehow machined into the the bolt itself instead of just being screwed on or whatever. So that's how I'm making it. I'm making it built in, which it, it's kind of a bad idea, but it sort of makes sense, I guess. So I'm just adding in all the edges that I need to keep it all correct. And now I'm going back and trying to see if there's a better way I can do, do things, because that wasn't the best way. Right, so now I'm just doing it slightly better. And now I'm adding the, I'm, I've, I just added the curve to the handle. And now I'm just adding in all the little edges that I need to uh, keep it, keep the shape. Now there's some pinching in this, in this uh, bolt, so I had to go back and fix that. Yeah, you can see it right there. The edges look kind of weird. There's probably a better way to fix that, but I didn't do it. Instead, I just pushed and pulled some uh, edges. And uh, now I'm adding that rounded ed end to the handle. And uh, I got a max script error there, trying to do something or other. I don't know. Some of these, uh, these here max scripts are kind of funky. I'm just adding in most of these edge loops by using the uh, edge loops edge loop select tool, or the edge ring select tool, and then just using connect or cut or whatever. It depends on the situation. That's right, I, I just said situation. So now I just ended some task because something happened and it crashed or something. So now I'm just centering all the pivots and everything to make sure that uh, everything stays centered. And now I'm, I'm duplicating over some of the details and making them larger. Because a lot of the details are symmetrical. The floating detail that we added at the beginning. Or they're, they just need to be very slightly adjusted for the other side. So I'm just fixing up some of the uh, the edge edge flow in that area because it was giving me some nasty results. And I'm zooming in and out on that little part there that looks like a face. Come on, it looks like a face. It's got two little eyes and this big mouth that's like... Argh. So now I notice that the... Uh, the hole for the bolt assembly actually goes longer. It goes out quite quite a ways. And now I'm just trying to get everything selected, just playing around with selection tools, trying to get everything selected like faster. Learning as you go. Oh, oh I was trying to use the uh, skew tool, but it was kind of not, it was acting up. And uh, you can notice that I use a lot of those like thin triangles that I, whoa, what just happened? Oh, because I needed to reset my X form. Yeah, so uh, whenever something weird happens, re either reset your X forms on the model, which is in the uh, tools tab, or yes, yeah, the last tab to the right on the little parameters menu thingy on the side, the command panel. 
Uh, you can if you reset that, that'll usually fix a lot of stuff. So yeah, that's what I did. So I was able to use skew on a couple of vertices to get the shape, and then I was able to just collapse that and keep working. Sometimes, sometimes I find collapsing stuff better than just keep at it, keeping. Just to, what am I trying to say? Sometimes I find collapsing stuff just easier to work with than having to add a bajillion edit poly mod modifiers. I don't know, there's just something about it. So now I'm uh, adding some, some more more polys here. And uh, fixing up the corners and whatnot underneath. And uh, you can notice those thin triangles at the bottom that everybody says to avoid. Well, guess what? I did them because uh, I'm the best main. I did it. No, because it's underneath and it's hidden, so why should I bother avoiding those? So now I'm just uh, extruding some uh, edges. Because underneath there, that's yeah, that's how far back the bolt goes. It's pretty crazy. I got scissors. Cut it out. I don't have any scissors. Uh. So now what I'm doing here is kind of interesting. There's this weird like lip or something that the fire selector goes up into and I was trying to use splines to model this to, to get this kind of floating in but it didn't turn out very good so watch and learn from my mistakes while I eat this sandwich
All right, hey again. So, skipping forward a little bit because it's basically more of the same old, same old. And so I decided just to save save you a little bit of time and uh, not show you me doing the exact same thing over and over. So uh, for this this trigger here, I started by using a a spline, and I turned uh, I. I made it visible to all, visible to renderable and visible to viewport, and then I uh, converted it to editable poly once I got all the shape right, and then I changed around some verts and stuff, and now I'm adding in edges and forming the shape. And I did basically the same thing for the uh, trigger guard. So now I'm just forming this weird like metal type part that's above the, the, the grip. And uh, this is just basically a box with some extra stuff in it. and uh, rounded corners, pretty simple. And now I'm just adding some extra edges for uh, for shape purposes. And so now I'm forming the grip. And I did this by basically duplicating some faces from the bottom of that weird part that I just made and then I extruded them and now I'm just shaping them by adding adding in more edges using connect and so I'm also shift dragging to uh, extrude stuff down shift drag has to be probably like the best invention ever because it makes making shapes so extremely easy so now to make this uh, this weird part down here I'm uh, extruding and then I'm just using bridge to get stuff right. And uh, to make the shape, I'm just uh, pulling and pushing stuff around. Pushing and pulling stuff and using uh, chamfer to get the shape correct. That makes stuff a little bit more, more rounded. And now I'm just screwing around with adding in like edge loops and whatnot to uh, to make the shape better. Let's make it work right. And uh, just trying to make this look round and not look like a weird 90 degree type shape that's ugly and has a lot of hard edges because that's not what this is. This is a plastic grip. Plastic is soft, remember that, but don't make it a blob. So now I'm playing around with push to see what I can do here, and uh, mostly just screwing around with the, with the shape. So I think uh, this is basically how I uh, how I did it. And so now I'm remaking this shape, I think, because I actually don't know why. Oh, I'm pulling stuff in so it's softer. Now I'm uh, now I'm re-adding in this garbage down here, and fixing up some of the uh, topology. This is this script will look a lot better at the end.
So I just deleted half of it, so, um, or actually, I think that's how it was, but my symmetry modifier need to be in effect a little better. So I think this is the general shape of the grip that I have here that I made it, made it to the to the bake process and made it finalized and stuff. Because it's relatively smooth. It looks pretty chunky and it's not a blob. And it's pretty representative of what the real thing looks like. And so now I'm just adjusting the, the part above it to fit a little bit better with the grip. make it a little bit thinner and rounder so it fits with the curves that I gave the grip. So I'm just looking through my reference pictures to, uh, to see what I can do next and to verify that the shape is correct. So I'm just duplicating uh, this little cylinder here that I had in the uh, this thing, and uh, adding an indent to it to get this front little cylinder shape. And uh, browsing for some more reference pictures to uh, to see what I can do next, uh, especially ones for the stock, because that's what I'm going to do next, I think. So I'm starting out with the stock. Uh, I'm just doing that by creating a flat plane and then basically turning it into a box and then I'm going to take that and start extruding shapes out of it So uh, making making these rounded edges a little bit nicer, adding in the required loops that I need to to make it look correct, and adjusting uh, adjusting them as needed. And I have the I have like the hiccups or something. I have, I have some water right here, but I'm sure you don't want me to make lots of slurping noises, and I don't want to pause this or mute my microphone because I'm lazy. And um, bridging some edges because it didn't. It wasn't just a round edge, then a straight 90 degree angle up. It actually curved up into this top section. You know what? Screw this. I'm just gonna take a moment away from the mic to breathe. All right. Oh, some good water. Tastes like water. And uh, just adding in some more edges. Something else to try and try and I don't know if I said this earlier, but try and avoid working with very small edges. Try to make make sure you're working with the block out shapes a lot, and then at the end you should add in all the, the loops that you need. I don't really demonstrate that very well in this video, but I did this video last month, so. I've learned so much since then. It's really quite quite incredible how much you learn in such a short amount of time. Uh especially when you're taking lots of critique and everything. Uh Plus I've gotten a lot I 
I got pretty set in my ways just doing stuff how I how I used to do it and uh didn't know before not to deal with small edges but it does make life a lot easier so pro tip don't deal with small edges a lot because they're annoying all right so shaping this this entire thing here was kind of a pain uh probably just the just the way I did it was a pain I could have simplified it a lot more but I got it done that's all that matters right so I'm just capping stuff and manually adding in my edge loops that it, I probably shouldn't have done actually uh, that's probably a good idea because it actually made it pretty clean so now I'm just uh, using bridge to cap stuff off. And uh, just flatten them by whatever axis they're on. And there's still some open vert vertices so border mode wasn't working right. And uh, making, making our manual uh, edge loops there. Now adding in the cuts I think that I need. Uh, okay, I'm still making the shape. Making this shape by just dra shift dragging up. Shift drag is amazing, I have to say. It's one thing that I like in 3D Studio Max more than other programs. One feature that I need is shift drag. So, continuing to add in loops just to make uh, everything work right and now I'm adding in uh, some extra loops because I need to prep it for cutting out like the top and bottom sections yeah there we go so I just deleted the the, uh, the middle section I should say actually that's not what I should say that that's the correct thing to say is the middle section I don't know why I said top and bottom so now I'm just duplicating the faces down there just because it's easier than having to remake all that garbage so I'm just duplicating the faces and I'm gonna delete whatever else I don't need and uh... what am I doing? oh, I'm moving them and so now I'm welding them together actually just using collapse because Collapse is a bit what better than weld, in my opinion, for just taking two verts and just insta collapsing into one. Because with weld, you have to like tweak it and stuff. I don't know. So I think I was like changing music or something. So now I'm uh, playing around trying to get all this this stuff to be properly aligned straight and so now I'm bridging the two uh, two sides to, to fill that gap and that wasn't perfectly oh, dropped the, dropped my pencil it's not a uh, it wasn't perfectly flat and it's still not perfectly flat and I need to fix that So I'm scaling this out because it didn't quite match how I needed it to be. And I must have been talking to somebody or something. So, yeah, these weird like pegs or whatever are pretty, uh, pretty wide, apparently. Because if they're too small, it's not going to look right proportion-wise. There we go, that's the reference that we need.
Alright, so now I'm just deleting the faces that I need uh, to cut out this hole that the stock snaps into. Because this, this stock on this gun folds, it's not just solid. So this is like the the thing that it goes into and there's like a latch inside of it. So now I'm fitting this part so the stock would fit into it. 